Joe, I, I guess you want to touch on some stuff in a moment, but the muscle strain real quick with Danny Salazar. He's been throwing. He was shut down for a while. For Indian fans, any chance at all of him in this series? Uh, I just heard this morning that it looks like he's not going to be on the roster for the first series. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Okay, yep. uh, let's get into what you have. You have yeah, a plot you know, of things Last week today. we had to talk, and sometimes we do in sports medicine, about these heart-wrenching you know, stories and, and very difficult ones that occur. But I... It had a uh, one of my trainers kind of uh, tweaking me the other day about a story that I found pretty inspirational, and actually it's been picked up by some of the news outlets. Probably the best article was in the Youngstown Vindicator, but I think the story made it to something like uh, the Today Show and everything about a young man. You know, Ray, that we cover about 20-some, greater than 20 high schools in the Akron-Youngstown area, and one of my trainers called me to try to give me a little hard time. He said, I know you know everything about injuries, but what do I do with this one? It is I have a kid who has a broken prosthesis. And so he began to tell me the story of a young man by the name of Damon Hodges. And I just found it really inspiring. This young man from a school by the name of Youngstown Liberty High School is a kid whose uh, legs were amputated uh, at age two um, as a result of some birth complications. Uh, and this young man has uh, gotten around with prosthetic legs his entire life. You know, he was told by a lot of people he'd never walk and def- definitely never le- uh, lead a normal life. And now this young man is going to letter this year at Liberty High School where he plays football. And the guys on the team just really love ha- uh, watching him play. He's a defensive end for the uh, Liberty Leopards, wow. and he did early in the season have a broken prosthesis, and they had to get him to a uh, local place, somebody that's been working with him for a long time. They got the prosthetic taken care of, and he was ready to play that Friday night. So that was an unusual injury for me to, to see. But this young man, Damon Hodges, is really uh, an inspirational story. It can be done, right, Joe? It can be done, amazingly. You know, I, we've, we've had pay, uh, young athletes on some of our teams with a single prosthesis, but this young man's playing with prosthesis on both sides, both legs, and my hat's off to him. It's just a wonderful story. What else did you have for us today? Well, you know, I mean, everybody is talking in the sports medicine world about Jan Gomes, the amazing recovery of Jan Gomes. Who was it that laid hands on him and got him back playing? It looks like he will be, from what I understand. You know more than me, but it will be on the uh, first round of the roster for the first series that we're in, and um, you know, it was September 16th that they told us a non-displaced fracture of the wrist. For all my efforts to find out yesterday what was going on with that fracture, it's really unusual. But heading into last weekend, they said, well, he could catch only. He couldn't hit. And then on a day and a half later, they put him in the lineup he could hit. And in his first at bat, he hit a home run. So we're having a hard time kind of figuring out on the sports medicine circles. They still say that it was a non-displaced fracture, perhaps healed quickly. But sometimes the medical team giveth and sometimes taketh away. And in this case, whatever it is, um, the Indians really haven't released any further information on it. But Jan Gomes looks like he's going to play in the playoffs. And that's an encouraging story. Boy, that is. I think he had one more thing for us, right? Yeah, you know, um, it happens to be a lot of times we talk about how cursed we are in Cleveland sports, but in Philadelphia with the 76ers, they're really scratching their head. And there's an injury that we see in high school kids and college kids, definitely, um, but it really uh, seems to affect particularly big men in basketball are more prone to some of these foot fractures. And the 76ers have had number one overall picks that have been injured with foot fractures. Nerlens Noel couldn't play. Joel Embiid could and play and this year the guy who's supposedly the next great star of the NBA Ben Simmons it was announced this week he had a fracture and this fracture known as a Jones fracture is kind of a stress fracture in the small bone on the outside of the foot and it just doesn't heal in a cast it doesn't heal with time it needs to have an operation surgery even in our high school kids when we see this fracture it needs to be operated on but the good news is it has usually a very good outcome 
You know, recently in pro sports, we saw Kevin Durant, and he came back and had a great year last year. Pau Gasol has had, I guess, uh, two of these Jones fractures. In Cleveland lore of sports, this is the one, though, where Jim Jones broke his foot. The Cavs in the miracle year were headed to a championship, and when Jones broke his foot, the Cavs were derailed. So this Jones fracture is one that needs fixed. But the good news for the 76ers, it's about two to three months, and then it usually heals well. There's some talk yesterday about being out for the season. But in our high school kids, kids are back within three months, and they do well, but it's just really unfortunate that it needs surgery to get it healed. All right, great stuff, Joe. Good thought process into it and education, and we'll catch up with you next week. Okay, Ray, have a great week. You too. Dr. Joe Congeni, Sports Medicine Center at Akron Children's Hospital, joining us live, and he joins us each Wednesday morning at this time.